Well, the crisis in Spain over Catalonia's bid for independence getting pretty heated. The government is moving to remove the Catalan leaders who want to be independent. Joining us now with his views on that and, of course, the latest on the U.K.'s negotiations to exit the EU, Nigel Farage, member of European Parliament and former leader of the UKIP party that pushed for, of course, that British exit. It's great to see you here. We should also mention you're a Fox News contributor, and good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Nigel, let's start with Spain. Obviously, they want to pull the leaders. They want to remove them from power. This is a pretty extreme measure that the Spanish government is taking. There's sure to be more protests. Do you agree with Spain's leadership that they need to get rid of the Catalan uh, politicians uh, for good and keep Catalonia as a part of Spain? Well, look, I believe in nation states. Of course I do. Um, I've spent much of my political career fighting for the concept of nation states. However, you know, the principle of national self-determination is an important one. Now, there has been a Catalan separatist movement around for many, many years. What happened three weeks ago was they wanted to hold a referendum to test public opinion. The Spanish government said it wasn't legal because it hadn't been agreed with the Spanish parliament. And they then tried to stop people from going out and expressing an opinion. I mean, 900 people were injured by the barbarism of Spanish police. And, of course, what that's meant is that now many fair-minded Catalans are saying, wow, if this is the way Spain behaves, perhaps we ought to be independent. So this Friday, the Senate in Madrid will vote on removing autonomy from Catalonia and government police, government troops and officials will move in, take over control of the administration and the parliament and the president of Catalonia will lose his position. In fact, it's, it's even rumoured that he could be arrested for treason. Now, if this is the way Spain behaves, it's very difficult to call it a modern-day democracy. They're behaving in a totalitarian way. I mean, this is like almost the old days of fascism under Franco. Right. So I think what's going to happen uh, is you're going to see uh, possibly violence on the streets this time mm. next week. Uh, and I feel that the campaign now for Catalan separation can only grow. Nigel, Jerry Willis here. Uh, I, th this has just been amazing to watch over the weekend. But a Spanish European Parliament member said of you, here's what he said, the best thing about Brexit, for example, is never seeing Nigel Farage ever again. Uh, I want to get back to the yes. Spanish story well, with you for just a second, because what you've said that I think is so interesting is that an EU crackdown is the foretaste of EU political suppression. What do you mean by that? Well, isn't it interesting that when, when Croatia wanted to break away from Yugoslavia, the European Union recognised Croatia uh, because Croatia was pro the European project. The Catalans, of course, are not pro-European Union, and so the EU effectively is turning a blind eye to violence being used against ordinary folk trying to express their view. Uh, and I think my concern is this, uh, that as political union deepens within Europe, they've got their own police force, they're building their own army. I think we can see, given their attitude towards Catalan separatists, uh, that it's not very long before the European Union itself starts to crack down on member states, possibly, who want to leave the Union. All I can say is, thank goodness we voted Brexit. We should be out just in time. Nigel, let's move over to what's happening with, uh, obviously, the U.K. trying to and, and planning to leave the EU. This is coming down to money. Uh, you know, the, the Britons want to pay maybe $20 billion, uh, The EU wants $40 billion, So we're a little different there. This has become a very, a very expensive divorce. Does these figures, which are so far off, mean that we're going to have a prolonged Brexit, if you will? Well, the figures are ridiculous. I mean, the idea that we owe $40 billion is absolute nonsense. But here's the problem. Uh, the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, is presiding over a cabinet that's split. Uh, most of them are still Remainers. Some uh, voted leave. And what she did a few weeks ago in Florence with that speech is she made some concessions to the European Union. They then banked those and came back and asked for more. You cannot appease bullies, because if you do that, the demands always get higher. Uh, and it's high time the British Prime Minister said, look, we're leaving this union. These are the terms that we're prepared to talk about. Uh, by all means, we want to be reasonable. 
But if you're going to go on behaving as badly as this, we will simply leave and not pay you a penny. And <laughs> that's where this now needs to get to. Well, Nigel, I mean, isn't it in the EU's best interest to have Theresa May in power because she is so weak? Yes, and that, I think, is why at the summit in Brussels on Friday, uh, they were, for the first time in months, actually being nice to her. Sort of, you know, she went along to this dinner with 27 leaders and, and basically begged them for help, uh, which I think is pretty humiliating for our country. And But the next morning, they were effectively patting the British Prime Minister on the head, saying, they're there, it'll all be OK in the end. Uh, frankly, uh, as somebody who not only believes in Brexit, uh, but also the pride and dignity of the United Kingdom, uh, I thought the whole spectacle was pretty humiliating. Nigel Farage, it's so great to have you as a voice on all things Europe this morning, especially as Americans wake up to the news on both sides. Nigel Farage, thank you, sir.